Attention musicians of all levels. It's not always easy picking out a song by ear. Sometimes you need a little help. Well, I have the app for you. Whether you're a professional musician or a beginner, Ultimate Guitar is an amazing app. For just $2.99, you get the chords and tabs on guitar, bass, or ukulele for over a million songs. They're all available at your fingertips. You also get tools like a tuner, metronome, chord library, lessons, videos, and more. You can find out any song you want. It also has like transpose button. It has auto scroll that you can change the speed to so you can play along with the song. A lot of the songs have the lyrics there so you can sing along with them. Ultimate Guitar is an amazing app. Just go to ultimateguitar.com or download the app to your phone today and start playing. Start playing any song you want. Ultimate Guitar, that's the place for you. Let's get down. Johnny, I'm your host. Welcome to the show. Uh, I hope you guys have all had a good week, whatever it is you do during the week. I've had a really good week. It's been, uh, if you live in Austin, you know what I'm talking about. The heat has been like extreme. It's been over 100 degrees every single day. It, the lows are like the 80s. It's been a little insane. Uh, but I, my dog, Rosie, and I, we do stuff in the morning for a couple of hours. Like I try and get up really early and do something like around 6.30 till about, you know, 9 or 10. Try and do some some something exciting with her outside go to the park go for a walk go to a place and walk around we've been going to onion creek that's a good place i like going out there now my friend uh kelly mickwee great songwriter told me about that place it's a it's a fantastic place i run into some folks out there every time i'm out there some cool like rock and roll dog walking people <laughs> it's cool they're out there out there walking their dogs they're like hey you come here too hey you come here too hey gang i want to tell you if you listen to this show the day that it comes out uh tomorrow saturday July 16th, Skyrocket will be playing at Hotspot here in Austin. If you live in the northern quadrant of the Austin area, that's a place that you can kind of like get to. It's in Cedar Park, I believe, is where it is actually, like technically. But it's Austin, man. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a little trek for me, but I'm really excited to play out there. It's a great venue. They've been doing great shows out there, great touring shows, too. I mean, you know, Maybe you've seen all that stuff on your social media, or maybe, maybe you've been out there to see a show. Uh, our shows out there are really fun. It's nice. It's outside. We start at 8, so it'll be cool. And uh, and there's a great screen, so our video presentation is super awesome. Our drummer Darren is back from his tour. We haven't been with him in six weeks, so uh, so that's an exciting thing. Uh, it was really fun. We rehearsed yesterday, and like getting back into that groove, you forget you forget that that's the engine you know that runs this band is the drummer, even your band, whatever it is. You know what I mean? The feel of the band starts with this person, right? The way that they the way that they lay down the groove. So we've had all these sub drummers coming in, and and I'm, it feels. You know, Skyrocket, we've been playing together for, for 20 years, you know? And I, I mean, I've been playing with Darren for 25 years off and on, 20 more than that, you know, as friends. But 20 years with Skyrocket, so you got you, you, you get used to a certain feel. Like I'm playing keyboards on songs where I'm playing piano and really sort of like feeling the thing. It's a little different when a, when a, diff, a drummer with a different feel comes in. So it's pretty exciting to get back into that. Sorry, I just had to tell you guys, because that's the thing as a musician that like, it's, it's like... You know, it's like putting on your favorite pair of jeans that fits right, you know, if if that if that's a good analogy. I'll try and think of a better one. Gang, I have a great show for you today. Brandon and Derek Campbell, they are twins from Versailles, Kentucky, and play under the name The Kentucky Gentleman. And uh, they play country music. They're based out of Nashville. Their singles, Love Language, Alcohol, Vibin', and w- Whatever You're Up For, which also was featured on CMT, um, amazing songs, great, great songwriters, a great vibe. Uh, these songs were produced by Chris Sly from Rascal Flats and Grammy nominated producer, uh, Matt McClure, who did Lee Bryce and Dylan Scott. Uh, they've recently been on the road with the Black Opry Review. As the, I didn't say this, but they are African American dudes, and and we have a great conversation about the challenges of trying to navigate uh, predominantly white music business. 
they are in Nashville, you know, and in country music. And, 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 you know, the fact that they've been featured on so many things is because it's a testament to what great artists they are. They're great, great. We have a great conversation about growing up together. There was a time that they spent apart and they realized like, hey, we should get back together. They moved to Nashville, started making music with these amazing producers. And here they are now. You can find them at thekygentleman.com. I know that sounds a little funny for those of you that are thinking, but the KY is for Kentucky. Thekygentleman.com. We do have a little laugh about it. It's not for KY. Y Jelly, it's for it's for Kentucky. The KY Gentleman. Uh, you can find their music on Spotify or wherever it is you listen to music. Um, they're currently living in Nashville. I said that they grew up on '90s country and R&B, and they put that music together, and that's their sound. And you know, it it over the last decade, I've sort of come to uh, to accept new sounds in country music. You know what I mean? I think that there's a thing where there's people that like I'm not as immersed in country music, so I'm not there as it's developing in the forefront. What I'm stuck in is like the country music that I grew up on and then I walked away from it and then I came back and it sounded weird to me. But that's what happens. There's an evolution to to country music and these guys are pretty much on the forefront of that blending country and R&B together and creating this great new sound which they have. The Kentucky Gentlemen, I had a great time talking to Brandon and Derek Campbell. They're really, really wonderful people. They're twins. <laughs> you know, that's a great. We talk about growing up in Kentucky, growing up on the music, and, and, and just kind of like what, what made them decide to make music. Great conversation. Enjoy my conversation with Derek and Brandon Campbell, the Kentucky Gentlemen. Let's get down. Not thinking about you. Not thinking about, thinking about someone new Trying to move on with my life Cause that's what you're supposed to do Not drinking about you Not drinking about, drinking about all we've been through Trying to drown you out of my life Now I'm pouring out whiskey and wine Making those memories fade Till I'm a drunk cliche There's this thing, man, like I, I, uh, I was born in Miami My dad always lived there And you'd go out on, on the boat you know, and they take you to go behind the famous people's houses. And they'd always go by one of the houses on Miami Beach and go, that's where the Bee Gees lived. And I'd be like, those guys don't live together. They're all millionaires and like grownups. So, so Derek, you and Brandon, even though you started out living together in the womb, yes. all the way until whenever you stopped and probably living together on the road, when you, when you go home, you do not live together. We, our rule is we technically do live together, but our rule is once one of us is married, that is when we will part. <laughs> uh, until then, we are um, we are together. We just happen to not be together today. Right. Okay. Okay. But, uh, so you do live together. We do live together. Oh we do. wow! Okay, so someone could drive by y'all's house and be like, "That's the Campbell's house." That's it. Yeah. <laughs> How are you guys doing? Are you in Nashville? We are. I'm actually in Nashville. He is back home in Kentucky currently. Okay. Um, we had to. He had to run up there to take care of some things. But uh, but you guys live in Nashville. We yeah, do. We, we live, live in Nashville. Nashville. Okay. Well, I'm glad we finally. I just. I was going through this stuff uh, today. Like, kind of go. I realized, like, we've been trying to set this up since February. But I'm glad it finally happened because I've been really wanting to talk to you guys for a while. Yeah, yeah, we're so happy to finally get to talk to you. We appreciate you having us, and I uh, am no we're problem. looking forward to this. So, uh, there's uh, your stuff is great, and I was uh, earlier. I was I was listening to it. I had to uh, yeah, like to just playing in the background while I was making my notes and reading stuff. And I'm I'm at my grandma's house right now in Houston, uh, helping take care of her. My aunt walked by, and she, she was like, "God, I like that. What is that?" And it's weird because. Country music, like I'm 53, okay, and I'm not a country mm -hmm. artist, and I'm not a country aficionado by any means. But your music sounds like pop music to me. Mm -hmm. I, we um, sorry, go ahead. We we do pull a lot from our, our, our like we grew up pretty much strictly on R and B and country, and so um, to us there. We never really, we, in our household, we didn't really separate the two. Sure. And I think that that is why a lot of people, what they hear is exactly that. Yeah. And they're used to separating the two. <laughs> well, I also, I also feel like it's a generational thing, man. I feel like you guys are in your 20s, right? 
Okay, so right. I'm in my fifties. There were definitive lines. Like you didn't you didn't go to an Ozzy Osbourne show like when I was a kid wearing a Hall and Oates shirt because someone would beat the shit out of you, right? Yeah. <laughs> but but now music is just kind of music. It's not old. It's not new. It's just music. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. That we have noticed that with that um, uh, generationally, like a lot of us, like back in the day, like the countryest of kids would not have been even in like early nineties would right. not have been bumping Ice Cube, but yeah. like the rednecks of the rednecks were bumping Lil Wayne growing up. You know, that's so, true. Like I think that's true. Just, yeah, everyone just listens to everything. Um, you almost can't help like kind of the um, like young artists, very young artists and those who are in their 20s and younger, like, you, they can't help but you know, have all those influences pulled out. Yeah. yeah. It reminds me of, like, uh, I was seeing May Fest a few weeks ago. I wore a cowboy hat, but I wore a Whitney Houston shirt all day long. <laughs> so when I was, like, walking to bars, people would, like, point it out and then do a Whitney Houston cover and it was, like, there was no in the right after a country cover, they'd go, oh, let's do some Whitney Houston. Right, right. Yeah. Well, also, like, there's, there's, I mean, at least when I was growing up, there was, like, one African-American country guy. And his name was Johnny Mathis. But he was also super pop. Or not Johnny yeah. Mathis. Sorry. I, why am I confusing the names? It wasn't Johnny Mathis. Uh, Charlie Pride. Charlie Pride. Yeah. Right. Sorry. Yeah, Charlie, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Um, but, 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 like, it's, all of it seems so... Uh, do you got? Do you never feel any sort of race issues? Do you in it? It seems oh, like we, you just we, you would. We we certainly do. <laughs> so, Absolutely. And we just uh, there's a whole lot of um, like yes, we're in the room and we're working working our tails off. But um, like you know, it's not so much as when Charlie Pride first started out. They is what he looks like, but it's definitely we face those those barriers that people put on you every, every time you're in the room, every time they put, they listen to a song, they, there's always this preconceived notion. And if you don't fit that bill, um, they kind of put a, a ceiling over you and say, well, we don't think that's marketable or we don't think this or that. And so kind of, kind of what we're about is standing in that, um, uh, exactly who we are and seeing how far that'll get us. Just, uh, just, it's kind of our own, our own point of, kind of pushing the barriers ourselves. We certainly face uh, race, <laughs> race comments and, um, and those unfortunate standards quite sure, a bit. Sure, sure. And that never deterred you from going, like, instead of, like, going to, like, pursue a less uh, country and, West, like, country vibe? Like, I'm, I'm you know, um, what, I'm, what I'm trying to get at is you guys have fucking balls. Like, yeah. And yeah, I think I mean, you're great, and I think it's cool as shit that 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 you have stood your ground. But also, there's a part of me that's kind of a chicken shit that would be like, you know, dude, I don't know if I want to put up with all this. You know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. Um, you know, I have always said that um, it's really no different than growing up in Versailles, Kentucky. <laughs> so, um, well, tell me about that. I've never that even is, heard of that place. Where is that? It's um, it's a small town right outside of Lexington. Okay. It's a, a claim to fame, Woodford Reserve, Woodford County. That's a okay. we're bourbon country and horse country, just kind of that that kind of deal. Uh, it's just you know there weren't so many um, people that black like people them. around, and no. yeah, if they were if they were black, there's a good chance we were actually related. It was it was just very very small, um, and so you dealt with a whole lot of issues, and you everyone had their own way of getting through those things and surviving those things and kind of growing into uh, into better adults than the ones that you dealt with growing up. <laughs> but uh, it's just, I guess, what kind of how we face it is it's really no different than kind of being not in the majority and dealing with those same, those same aspects as, you know, as kids. Sure. But uh, we like, we are, we are, we love country music and we, we love, we love, we love, we love, and we like what we like and we just kind of, just keep pressing forward till we get to where we're going. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't want to let this go unsaid for a while because there might be some people that don't know you guys that are familiar with the show that are listening to this right now that are super pissed off. But but you did have like you, you had a video on CMT. Uh, there there is there there's a lot of stuff that you guys do have going on. 
Like, yeah, yeah. CMT has been a very big, I would say out of a lot of the organizations that come out of Nashville, CMT has always led the charge of making country music and country music industry more diverse. And so inclusive. And inclusive, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, uh, whatever You're Up For was a tune that they played. Great song, too, by the way. All these songs are great. You guys, uh, talk to me about your songwriting. Like, how, how do these... How do these songs come up? You guys write them yourselves? Do you write with other people? What's the jam? Yeah, uh, we, uh, as you know, at the end of the day, we know that the songs, the music is what's most important. The, yes, you know, all those other things we just talked about, but the music is where it's at. And so uh, and we understand the importance of the music reflecting our own authenticity. So we, uh, we kind of find uh, like like minded and even not so like minded writers in Nashville, and we're all kind of gathering rooms and it's the camaraderie it has really helped us like find our sound and um, find out how we how to get like just what we want to get across. Uh, whatever you're up for, we <laughs> whatever you're up for. Actually, we had a writing camp and we just kind of like locked ourselves away for days with a bunch of writers. And at the very end of it, we were like, we have not like it's been really serious camp. We were a lot of serious songs, right. and uh, uh, and we were we hadn't really written anything fun. Like, <laughs> like, let's actually just let loose. And, yeah, and we're like, beat. let's write a show opener. We need a show opener. We need a beat. And he came in, another producer was like, oh, I think I have a track that you might like. And he played the, that track, and 10 seconds in, I was like, oh, my gosh. Because <laughs> yeah. we actually had never written with, like, a track track before. Usually everyone's got guitars in their hands. But uh, there was something kind of about that first, like, electric, like, chord that just kind of struck us. And, um we figured that was a great way to start off the year and release that out into the world. And I uh, got yeah, CMT picked it up and it, it, we were played it all over CMA Fest and um, it's been making its rounds and we're just really excited to where that's going and how that's being received. Tell me, tell me a little bit about CMA Fest because although I do have some country people, a lot of them are like Texas country and not really in the system that you, you guys are in the system. Like you're in the country music system. Yes, I guess yeah. that's a good way to put it. Yeah. I mean, shit, you're. I mean, you're in the you're in the machine, right? What? Are, what are, who puts out your music? Real quick. Uh, we are we're actually independent. Okay. Uh, still, we uh, we've got you know we've got great people around us to help us out, but uh, we release everything independently right now. What about publishing? Do you guys have a deal with that, or is there? We have no deal with that either. We uh, we do as just as individual artists. It's really. Um, which is interesting to be kind of and quote unquote the system and the scene with um, the two of us kind of running the show yeah. a lot. Um, but I think like it's honestly it's, it's working out well for now, and we're kind of one of those we're holding off till the, the most perfect you yeah. know thing comes along. Yeah, uh, we think we just we think that's best for us, and honestly, it's it's, it's helped us stay creative. It seems it seems also that like in in my mind of what country music could be, you guys could be the after party musically. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, you get I like you get that. a solo acoustic like Marin Morris to start off the night, then like a Chris Stapleton in the middle, and then you hit the fucking club for the Kentucky Gentleman. Yeah, just, you know what I mean? That's, hey, that's honestly, I love that description. <laughs> <laughs> love that. Thanks. If you guys ever need a guy to throw out quotes, just give me a shout. I'll 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 give you what I can. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Awesome. Awesome. yeah, we you know we're we're a dance the night away kind of, kind of people, yeah. and uh, that's uh, we 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 enjoy that, and so we just kind of bring try to bring that everywhere we go. That's the part that to me in in I, I, I hate to keep on bringing it up, but it, it is a real thing. Like in your racial situation in in the world that you live in, the fact that you guys are like, hey man, we're just having a party. You guys are welcome to join us or fuck off. You know what I mean? It's not really as like as like uh, the Sex Pistols as that, but like there is like a we're having a good time. Join us or don't. There's yeah. no yeah. yeah. That's exactly. I mean, I always say coming to a show is like watching us as kids with brushes in our hands, singing in the bedroom, just performing, making the, making our parents sit down and watch, and us just kind of dancing, <laughs> dancing, singing as hard as we can, and that's literally all we're doing on stage, uh, and we kind of hope that people can't help but to, but to join us. Yeah, yeah, we've been, a lot a lot of times lately, we've been saying, like, join the train or miss the train. Either way, we're going to have a good time on that's the right. train. So <laughs> Let me tell you something, dude. That comes through so strongly in your music. It really does. Thank that you. attitude does. Yeah, it totally does. 
Um, so, so back to how do you for sales or you don't say Versailles? Um, no, we, we don't say Very touchy <laughs> subject. No. <laughs> we, we, people get real offended when you say Versailles. I They're like, they this do. ain't France. <laughs> this ain't France. <laughs> 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 so you guys are growing up there. How, what what's the population generally? What, what, number one. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not just super sure of the town population, but I know just you know there's one middle school, one high school. We graduated with maybe 150 kids, um, which was a higher number than there usually is. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, our dad, and, uh, our whole dad side of the family's from there. He had 13 brothers and sisters. They all went to the same high school that we went to. Just like. Yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty small. I would say like the base is. I think it's like eight thousand now. Jesus, it's got yeah, 8, yeah. yeah. By the time we when we left, it was probably four thousand though. Okay, it's, it's expanded a little bit. Good for good for them. It's growing. <laughs> um, all right, so so you're you're growing up there, and you're first like exposed to music in in church, and you joined the choir. Yeah. yeah. So growing up, like in the church that we grew up in. There's children's choir, teenage choir, young adult choir, and then like the adult choir. And all the way up till young adult, your parents forced you to sing in church. Whether you could sing or not, you were in the choir. Right, right. So basically at five years old, we were singing the simplest songs. And (laughs) whether we could sing or not back then, I can't attest to, but we definitely were forced to sing in church. Was it Baptist? Yes. Okay. Yes, First Baptist Church. Right off Main Street. Six hour sermon. <laughs> really? <laughs> so long. I, I would say like maybe 11 to like 4 p.m. It would be would so. Just... The, average to, well, the average time that we would get out it would be around 3, from 11 to 3. And then it was a great Sunday if I got out at just a couple hours in. Usually it was like when... University of Kentucky basketball was about to play or something like that. Okay. They that we'd, uh, we'd sneak out during like family prayer when everybody would have their eyes closed and there was like a gas station next door and we'd go and get like a bunch of food and just like, <laughs> <laughs> I can't have food. Like, I was like, even Jesus needs a lunch break. <laughs> <laughs> so that goes into my next question. How, how connected were you to the religion itself as young people? Were you like God-fearing kids and like, I mean, I, we definitely love, love God. I, def, I honestly, maybe the six hour sermon prepared me from uh, continuing to show up and see my adulthood consistently. But um, I, we, you know, we built a strong relationship um, with God. We, we don't, you know, we, when we ask about that, we don't necessarily struggle with a relationship okay. or anything. We, um, like, we're, we're real comfortable with, um, with how, you know, how the Lord, sees us and we, we know he loves us that's good that's good because there's i mean in a lot of i mean i can imagine in your hometown at that church like hey guys we're going to go play the pride concert at a in nashville i'm i don't know how popular that would be <laughs> yeah um i know in mind it wouldn't be yeah, I, the funniest part is like the way that we are now when we're like, join the train or don't, we're going to have fun. As kids, we came across that same way. And so like, and our parents like made us that way, even from a very young age. So people even back even then knew we were just who we were and we're going to do what we do. And they can either be happy with us and for us or they can kind of like spend away and let us do our thing and it's it was back um, is now is what it was back then Mm -hmm. exactly a lot of a lot of love to our parents for making kind of making sure that uh the church couldn't hurt us and i think that that we got to a certain age and then they were like your choice you know you're a teenager now it's go where you want to where you feel most comfortable and um we did (laughs) and so how did I think about that confidence, and I, I, I wonder if any of it comes from being twins, like always having a person there with you since inception. Um, yeah. we, um, <laughs> we just talked to each other about that. We, um, we said that we kind of came to the conclusion that there's a good chance if, it was, if we weren't together and the thing just, you know, in, in Nashville, you hear so much, so many no's all the time, and so many, so many things get said and done to you, and things and you 
you know, people solo solo acts come home and they go home and they have to face that themselves. They have to push through like um, a lot of times and themselves. But you know, we got to lean on it. We had to go home, lean on each other, and regroup and rebuild. And I think that the fact that we've been able to keep doing that is why why we're still here doing this. Is there is there any competition that comes inherently from being twins? I I dated a twin for a while. <laughs> there is nowadays. There's a whole lot of in terms. I guess, Brandon, who do you think <laughs> actually? Um, in like what regard? Like, well, in, you guys. I mean, you guys share. I uh, like in your in okay in 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 whatever accolades you would get right now. You you would share. All right, but I'm sure you each have friends that aren't that close with the other one that are like, Derek, dude, you should be singing more, dude. Brandon's nowhere near as good as you. I know that's got to <laughs> happen. Like, I've been a musician my whole life, and I've been in bands where there's two singers, and someone's always telling you you're better than the other guy. <laughs> I think nowadays, uh, these days right now, a lot of the ad-libs that we're writing and recording in songs, um, there is a, like, why are you, why are you getting that big note? Like, and so, <laughs> See, that's what like, I'm wondering. There are yeah. moments on stage where I'm right beside him and I'm just belting all the big notes with him. He's looking at me like, why are you doing that? <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you think that's got to be at least some of it. Like, you're there and you're a team and you're viewed as a team. But, like, within that team, you are. Like, why is that guy getting to sing the big note right now? That's not, yeah. <laughs> it should be mine. There's a lot of that. We are, we're, you know, just growing into further into adulthood. There, there is a like, oh my goodness, like, why are we still sharing everything? Like, there's a hope now. There's a this is fine. Stop touching it. Ask for something. Like, yeah, you yeah. Know? Like, it's very much like that. Let me ask you this: How many other siblings do you guys have? We have one. Oh, you have one. Mm. Yeah. And he's just a year older, actually. So like, maybe a year and a half older. So we're so already all kind of the same age. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is there anything that like that keeps him left out of what you two experience as twins? Um, Jeff, we have very different interests. He's actually an MMA fighter, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> you're kidding. Yeah, yeah, that is was, awesome. You know, it's so odd too. Yeah, college football player, MMA fighter now. He, you know, he's just, I think, you know, there's there's definitely a, because there's like the Campbell brothers and then there's the Campbell twins. And then, you know, sometimes like oh. there's, there's this an, like annoying thing on, I'm sure that he hears like why people do seem to yeah. only be infatuated with the twins. Cause I, like, the twins. I feel like a lot of people have, um, which is, Strange us because like says we're like yeah we're twins we're brothers but a lot of people are very very infatuated with twins so like they have like all these questions and our older brother is standing right beside us and all they're doing is asking me and him questions right. like it's like so like I do I every mean, we like go overboard sometimes and do everything in our power to make sure that <laughs> we're not doing it ourselves right right but definitely like it's hard when we meet people and he's with us and then all they're doing is like talking about us being twins yeah <laughs> but yeah. He, he is pretty he himself is a is in in that regard is still pretty supportive he knows it's not our fault i guess yeah. <laughs> that's good that's good um uh, this is a weird question do mma fighters have like theme music like wrestlers do yeah did y'all do his music um no. he does he, he doesn't choose all right so he usually choose Brandon, what does he usually choose like he's changed it up a couple of times mm-hmm. but yeah, like most of the time it's like between rap and like rock. But every once in a while he'll like do something like classical, real, real like out there. And like I think he does it to mess with the opponent's mind because all of a sudden like he's a pretty big dude and his like nickname he goes by is Crazy Eyes. So he comes out and it, when it's like not something super aggressive and he's like smiling because he knows that like the guy is about to fight is. Like, why is this dude, big dude walking out the back? <laughs> <laughs> so, like, yeah, but he does have each other. I need to bring that up, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you guys should do some theme music. If you want me to, I'll, I'll go ahead and step in and negotiate that deal for you guys. Please um, do. Please do. I will say I'm already that. scared of your. I'm always scared of like MMA guys because I always grew up like a little artsy guy that was always getting his ass kicked by people somewhere, <laughs> you know, like as a teenager. 
Um, so, okay, so so you guys sang in the church choir, and then and then uh, like in your teen years, when did you, when did this thing take hold? Like, hey, let's like, what was the dream like when you were teenagers? Did you have a band? Did you write songs? Did you make music or? We did write songs, all including our big brother. We had we were a, our, we were a trio for a little bit as kids. Um, with our, for all our initials, it was DQB, <laughs> and so like we would like write voicemail songs for like if people called us or our parents, you'd hear us like singing, and he'd be in the background playing piano, doing <laughs> <laughs> music and stuff. But like we um we had honestly always you know dreamed of doing music for a living and, you know, playing, playing live shows and whatnot. But then we ended up going to separate colleges. And, um, after about close to a year, we weren't feeling what we were doing and where things were going. What was and your, so, what was your major, Derek? I was actually a, a ballet, had a ballet scholarship at oh, Indiana really? University. Yes. Oh, awesome, dude. Yeah. And, um, what about my brother you, was at Columbia. Um, I studied uh, music and fashion marketing at Columbia College in Chicago. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Those are equally, yeah. that, those are both two really cool things to pursue. Yeah, so that's why you guys um, also good. look so cool, right, Brandon? Are you the guy that calls the shots like fashion wise in the, in the duo? <laughs> I, I, try, I try my best to, to not, he doesn't like it when I tell him he's my client, but <laughs> <laughs> you know, he tries to make me dress like him, and I'm not happy. <laughs> but, you think his um, friends actually, you wouldn't want to dress alike. Exactly. That yeah. was always the M.O. growing up. We did not. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, what but, were you um, going to say? I was just so like, you know, during that first like semester and year of when we were separated, we actually barely spoke. I, and to this day, I'm not even sure what that was about. There was like... I think it was um, a subconscious, like, we need to do some things apart. <laughs> uh, sure. But I think then once we, but like, realized we weren't happy where we were and we kind of reconvened, and that, that was around 19 years old. And that's when, as a family, a little family meeting, and the next step was to do music together. And um, uh, we kind of picked up it a couple months later and moved into a one-bedroom to Nashville. So that's when, like, the Kentucky Gentleman started. Wow. So what did you do to get started there? So you just moved to Nash. Did you have songs? Did you? What did you have? Any we, uh, connections uh, or anyone's phone number or a gig? We had no connections, no phone numbers. We had a bunch of songs that we wrote a cappella because I wasn't the best guitar player yet. And, um, and we uh, had a dream. And we had fake ID. And that's what fake ID. So bad. Yeah. Wow. Well, that very first year, we wrote a song every single day, though, just to kind of get, to really get, like, our boots under our feet and kind of, we called it getting the worst stuff out of the way. But nowadays, that stuff's still some of my favorite things we've written. But, uh, but that's kind of how we, and then we just kind of started shaking hands and meeting other writers, and we've been building ever since. So. Wow, man. I'm serious. You guys have such balls. Like you just moved to this intense, like music business city. Like I live in Austin. You can smoke weed there and like all day and like still get your gigs done and everything. But like you can't fuck <laughs> around in those other towns. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah you. It, like it, they eat your lunch. Yeah, it, it's my. Um, it's kind of funny because when we moved there, I thought I had more money, and then when I got there, <laughs> they they're like somehow doubled the security deposit for some reason. Apparently I didn't have enough credit as a 19 year old. So, um, by the time my parents left, I didn't tell them, but I only had 67 cents in my bank. We had no money, no money. And then I realized that I forgot my toothbrush in Kentucky. So I had to go buy a kid's toothbrush and kid's toothpaste. And I used that for like a year. Like I was only buying kid's toothpaste fast because they're so much cheaper. But I used my last penny on a kid's toothbrush my first day in Nashville. Had yeah. <laughs> we would um we would rock paper scissors every night to see who would get the bed the bedroom or who would get the futon and wood or like it was you know we were so <laughs> whenever I say it out loud I'm like wow I'm so glad I uh, you know didn't care about like <laughs> what I had at the moment. <laughs> so did you guys you got you found jobs? We did. We what, did. We what found, did you end up doing? 
I was a, I delivered ice actually okay. ice to grocery stores and I was, I was a delivery guy. And I baked in frosted cakes in a bakery. <laughs> oh, awesome! <laughs> yeah. Did you learn how to actually bake? Bake? Like, is that something you can do? Yeah, well, I knew how to bake prior, but I never really wanted to do it for money. But <laughs> they were hiring, and I actually was like, when I signed up as a dishwasher, I lasted all of like three days doing that, and was like, hey, I'm gonna quit and I still have something else available. Cause I don't <laughs> do, I don't want to do this anymore. And they're like, okay, you can frost and bake cake. So I did. It was bunt cake. And so you guys were like, we're gonna work these. We're, we'll work these jobs until the next step. Mm-hmm. Yes. And it's pretty much doing what you got to do. So let me ask you a question. You guys, you guys are doing some shows right now, but like when you do these shows, you do them with the whole band. Most of them are with the whole band, depending on um, who the acts we're torn with okay. and whatnot. Uh, a lot of times, like if we're like torn with Black Opry, whatnot, that's always acoustic. But if outside of Black Opry writers like shows, we're always full band. Okay, that's great. That's really great. Um, <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, it's also like your music is pretty orchestrated. Like, a, I mean, I, they sound like good enough songs that you could play them on acoustic guitar and it'd be great. But there's also like a lot of shit that brings the party in those records, you know. Yeah. yeah quite time, a lot of people, when they see us with the band, and they're like, wow, that was a whole nother level. But I'm like, yeah, the songs come across. Definitely like the energy is just having everybody on stage with us. We pull from that a lot. How far do you guys go out, like, on the road? Do you guys ever come to Austin? I want to see you guys play. Yes, we were actually supposed to play Arlington last week. Uh-huh. But um, there was some schedule conflicts, so we had to kind of cancel it and rearrange some things. So hopefully we will be in Texas, and that is the goal. Yeah. yeah. Um, and you guys primarily play around Tennessee and Kentucky and stuff like that, and uh, Tennessee, Kentucky. We've been this year. We've been touring quite a bit. We've done New York, Wisconsin. We're doing Rhode Island next month. Oh, I saw that you're doing the Newport Folk Festival. Classic. We yeah. are. We are. It's a pretty big one. Sold out pretty quickly. So we're, how we're long excited. Is, how long has that thing been going on? Like longer than I've been alive. Yeah, yeah. it's been long, late fifties or something. Time. Yeah. So, Every yeah. time we say we're playing that, everybody's like, "What well, big deal?" And then like, I look at the lineup, and I'm like. Marion Morris is playing this that weekend. <laughs> well, I think I think also it was like a big deal in, in the '60s. But then then there was a time when Bob Dylan went and played electric for the first time there, and all these people booed him and all this stuff. And so there was uh-huh. this kind of like guys from my generation kind of knew that story, and then were like, "So what's the Newport Folk Festival? What's their problem with rock and roll?" And so yeah. <laughs> I didn't know that. I need to. I need to look into its history a lot. Um, I mean, it sounds. That's the only rich. real history oh, like, I know about it. But except for I have friends every once in a while. They're like, I, you know, they they're like, shit. I'm playing the New York Folk Festival this year, and you're like, wow. Hope they don't boo you. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, I hope they don't boo me. <laughs> so, so back back to you guys moving there. You got your jobs and stuff, and you're writing songs uh, every day, which is is I, I think. I'm a songwriter as well. I I believe that that's really like uh, writing a uh, a song that hits not not just a hit song, but a song that hits on all cylinders emotionally, melodically, uh, energy wise. It lifts you and drops you when it needs to. Like there's a perfect song. I don't. That's kind of like running a marathon, and you don't just wake up one di- day after not running for two years and run a marathon very well. You know, you right. got to run every day and you know have your shitty days. And then your good times will come every once in a while. You know what I mean? Yes, exactly, exactly that. We kind of wanted to uh, wanted to definitely do that and own it, like hone those the skills of just what a great song consists of. And uh, we wanted to hear uh, as little as critiques as possible. So we wanted to make sure we weren't, uh, you know, being rookies. <laughs> you know, so, yeah. Yeah. I don't know if the, uh, a lot of industry people ask it these days, but back then, they would always say, like, how many songs have you written? Yeah. And if you didn't say, like, a big number, they would say, all right, then you need to keep writing. Even if, like, what you showed them was great, they say, well, you just had, don't have enough songs or haven't written enough songs. So we're like, we got asked that five times. I was like, enough. We're, 
Right. Every, every 365 songs then, and then they'll never say we don't have enough songs. Right. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I remember in my in like in the '90s, uh, like shopping to labels. Like you would go and have these meetings with these A and R guys, and they'd be like, "Okay, great. What else you got?" And every time you're like, "Really?" Yeah. So you you learn to like eventually not play the very best thing first, so you can get, yeah. like have something third yeah. to be like, "Whoa." Um, so so you guys went out. Did you start playing just the two of you at like open mics and shit like that? Like, what were you doing? Yeah, we would be out. Oh yeah, we go to open mics, and there's sometimes they're like they're like we'll keep some of them kept going until like two or three in the morning. As long as everybody kept going, they'll keep going. There's times that we waited five hours just to play two songs at right, two right, a.m. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we started doing open mics, open mics. We did it for like probably about five six months, and then we finally started joining joining the um, Riders Realm circuit. And that was nice. And we kind of like was going back and forth between those. That's great. Yeah, it was like, it was the two of us until we we got to a point where we're like, I think we can do some things with the band. <laughs> and yeah. uh, now in between some things and to kind of figure out exactly, you know, who we are as, you know, performers. Yeah. Who did you find as band people? Like, did you have to like uh, Craigslist it? Yeah, I very yeah. much great. <laughs> to this day we like are pretty close with like the main band that we had from craigslist and like our main dudes like during the pandemic they unfortunately left town but there was a point where like they're playing with reba and they're like oh sorry we can't play with you we're playing with reba. i'm like screw reba you gotta play with me <laughs> but like to this day i still can't believe that we met some of close people that we still love this day through craigslist yeah <laughs> yeah okay. It's weird that Reba's band is on Craigslist. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I just did a show last summer uh, with a band and, and a friend of mine who plays bass with Kenny Chesney, uh, this woman named Harmony Kelly. She was in town hanging out for like the year and uh, until this year when they went back out. But she was like, hey, I'm around if you need to do stuff. But I, I, I did a thing with her. But there's like those guys need work, too. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's, um, you know, once they're not on the road, a lot of times folks aren't getting paid. So it, it makes sense that, you know, the, some folks will post up some Craigslist ads like, hey, yeah. some gigs in between these tours. Um, this guy, is it Chris Sly or Chris Slay? Chris Sly. Sly, okay, I was right. Okay, so Chris yeah. Sly and Matt McClure. How did you hook up with those guys? Um, Another co-writer actually... Um, got us in the room with Chris Slide. He was like, hey, I really think like you guys are really mess with him. You know, he's he's written some great music. He's written some rap, rascal flat hits. He's, you know, he's he's really like and I think he, you know, he really mess with y'all. So we 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 honestly got into the room in the very first song. But we hit it off and what we came I mean, honestly we were all kind of shy. We're not very shy people at all, but we were kind of like, ah but I think that's because we felt like it was great. Yeah, but it was one of those like, ah, let's see, let's really hope, you know, really hope we get something good. But um, we ended up leaving with a song that just, I mean, it hasn't been that particular song has not been released yet, but it is um, like you know, it just it always hits, and it, it was a, that definitely a special song. So from there, that's who we have almost included in every right, no matter who's in the room. We want Chris yeah. in the room. Yeah, he right. introduced us to Matt, who himself is an incredible producer, um, and so. We were kind of like, hey, if this hit maker of a writer and this Grammy winning of a producer, you yeah. know, say, hey, we're liking your sound and let's let's really like bring it to fruition. Um, let's let's go for it. We showed up one day and we all hit it off and went for it. He heard uh, we went through a whole bunch of songs and Matt heard whatever you're up for, and he we already chosen like some other songs and he just scrapped everything else and was like, nope, this is what you're starting with right here. And so that's, uh, that's kind of how that went down. Have you guys ever had that kind of direction or that kind of mentorship before? Uh, no. You know, no. Not, I mean, we're pretty um, big on working with people to get to go towards a certain direction, but it's always better when we get to, like, lead it. <laughs> and so, like, we were he was just like, if you want the industry's ear right now, this song right here is going to catch a lot of people's attention. And he wasn't wrong. And he was not wrong. No, he's not. We were, um, he was, 
we were wanting, well, we like to push the boundaries, but he was like, this will lean them into you. And then the next song you do, we can keep leaning into you, but this is a good starter. And it was nice for him to say that. It's great to hear that because we don't always get the inside perspective. It's kind of like we get that after we release things, not before. Right. So, yeah. It's kind of like the two man show thing. We got it. Right. So you, right. Uh, you're yeah. in our own direction. That's the problem that I that I have with the modern music business and the main change is that you're kind of expected to wear too many hats to be fully effective at every fucking job that they give you now. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. yes. And they're um and you know, they're aware of that and they don't care. That's kinda of, <laughs> that's kinda of, like to be honest. But so that's kinda of how we approach that issue is to kind of choose what we are. So we're lucky there's two of us, first of all. Yeah, totally. <laughs> but, uh, Very much so. Yes, we, we choose kind of what, you know, what we're strongest at, and we just, you know, we kind of hammer that in the best and kind of not be afraid to ask questions and say, hey, this is too much for me. How can I make this easier on us since we are having to wear so many hats and aspects of our career? I can't just ask someone to do something for me, right. and I can't just, right. you know, Um, And I'm not in a position to get to just write a check to everybody to do stuff for me. Right. Right. So, okay. So love language is the last single that you guys have put out. Right. And, uh, uh, I also thought, sorry, can I say, I, I, I make, uh, dick jokes left and right all the time in my general life. And it's hard with these zoom interviews (laughs) when someone doesn't know you that the, they, you know, like I'm a good person. I just saw something and I can't not make a dick joke about it. But your your website is the KY Gentleman. KY is short for, uh, yeah, exactly. Totally. So if you guys ever went into porn, that should be like your name. Or if you became porn producers, like the KY Gentleman. Um, well, every single show we say, it's KY Gentleman, not KY Jelly. If you look up KY Jelly, you okay, might so find it's not just me. Like, okay. Yeah, okay. Exactly. okay. <laughs> Man, I really like you guys. I wish you lived in Austin. I bet you got, we got to stay in touch. Here. Let me know when you come to town because I, I I will totally come see you and we can go eat whatever you guys go dancing whatever the fuck you guys want to do. I would go do it with you guys. Please, we're yeah. um. So okay, so you have all these singles out. They're fantastic. Now you said that 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 first song that y'all wrote is going to come out in the future. So you guys have a, a arsenal of singles coming out that's eventually going to be an album or what's happening on that level. Um, we actually have an EP that is going to be fully announced uh, this week with postings of, you know, folks to actually find where that's at. That'll be coming out um, so July, July 22nd. And so the songs that we've already released, plus one or two more will be on that. Um, and then after that, like that's just volume one and there's plenty more to come. <laughs> so we were kind of sitting on quite a bit and we're also still writing quite a bit. Good. So we're, we're ready. Good. Well, Derek and Brandon, it's been really great meeting you guys and uh you too, and talking to yeah. you. You're really like your your stuff is amazing and I just I think that you guys have a lot of, of great shit going on and uh and I look forward to being able to point at a television set one day and go like, I know those guys. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. yeah I appreciate man. that. Yeah. So much. Yeah. Thank you so much. Well, great Thanks talking to you guys. Uh, all these all these songs are available. I'll put links to all this stuff. The KYGentleman.com is the website. Uh, <laughs> Kentucky. Not KY Not KY <laughs> uh, If you're going to Newport Folk Festival, go see them. And uh, uh, great having you guys on. Great meeting you. Thank you. Uh, you too. Great. You guys Thank take you. care. You too. See you. Making those memories fade Till I'm a drunk cliche Going back till they say That's Brandon and Derek Campbell, the Kentucky Gentleman. Find them at thekygentleman.com and uh, find their music wherever it is you you stream and download your jams. That was a great conversation. Those guys are so cool. I really enjoyed talking to them a lot, man. What what a great, great, great set of twins. (laughs) Fantastic dudes, man. And don't forget, gang, while you're out there checking out thekygentleman.com, you can subscribe to this podcast. Follow us. Follow us. Rate us. Every episode. Give it a heart. Let us know how we're doing. Spread the word about how did I get here. Share this on social media. We're uh, at how did I get here on Facebook, and I'm at Johnny Gowdy on Twitter and uh, and Instagram. If you're new to the show, subscribe to it. We're on all platforms. New shows every Tuesday and every Friday. 
New shows every Tuesday and every Friday. There ain't no fucking seasons on this, baby. I'm putting out shows all the time. All right? Uh, thank you so much for listening. Have a great weekend. Come on out and see Skyrocket tomorrow. If you live in Austin at the hot spot, find us at skyrockettheband.com. And uh, I want to thank Brandon and Derek Campbell for talking to me. It was really great talking to those dudes from the backyard at my grandma's house. The Kentucky Gentleman. Have a great weekend, whatever it is you're doing. Let's get down. I need your love, baby. I don't need your love, baby. Not gonna miss you. Not gonna miss every little thing you do. Trying to pretend my heart's fine. Pour another whiskey and wine. Making those memories fade. Till I'm a drunk cliche. Throwing back till they say. I've had enough for dancing with my cup. We tearing this dance floor up till I forget, till you forget that I don't need your love. I don't need your love, baby. I don't need your love, baby. I don't need you at all Cause I got that alcohol Yeah, I got that alcohol mm. I feel nothing at all With that alcohol, baby I got alcohol If you think my heart's broke No, no, no I got that alcohol I got